We're getting back on track here with Catherine and Emily, but as you know, we won't stay there for long because this is the Going Off Track podcast. Hi, I'm Catherine. And I'm Emily. And this is the Going Off Track podcast. This is our first official episode, but for real this time, um, in case you missed it, we did a quick red flag rundown last week, all about Danny Ricardo's return to F1 on the official Going Off Track with Catherine and Emily YouTube channel. Watch it. We were very excited. It was ridiculous. And I also had power outages in my room um, because that's what it's like when I'm in one part of the world running a summer camp and Emily is in Argentina. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So plot twist i'm now in the u.s <laughs> um that is where i'm currently podcasting from in my parents house in new braunfels texas so i came back for some uh, exams that i've been studying for that i'm ugh, they're just absolutely miserable but um i'm back in the u.s for two weeks but I'm still not podcasting with Catherine. <laughs> no, we, we are not podcasting so. together, and we probably never will actually podcast together, which is kind of going to be the fun part. No, I think that's what we do. I think no matter what, we never actually podcast in the same room together. Yeah, like when we start that's going just... to races, we'll do it in like separate hotel rooms, separate rooms, everything. It'll be, it'll be separate. We just, and we can't sit together either. We have to sit no. apart from each other <laughs> the entire we time. We will figure that part, portion out. But um, <laughs> we are your hosts, Catherine and Emily, and we're here because we can't shut up about F1. No, we really can't. And it's, uh, it's a problem. Like, I know we, like, well, I don't know if you know, but I know I see memes all the time on Instagram where it's like me, me talking about F1 to all my friends. And I'm like, yeah, that's very much very much me. Um, I'm very, very thankful to have a friend like Catherine that I can talk F1 with because I would go insane and drive all my other friends insane because I won't shut, shut up about it. So it, that's yeah, pretty um, much. So Emily, who the hell yes. are you? <laughs> who the hell am I? So I am technically your Southern Hemisphere correspondent or co-host. Um, I live in Argentina, so I work for a large accounting firm and I'm on secondment right now in Argentina for two years so I've been there since March 2022 um so I have like a two-year secondment kind of but I'm not really sure when I'm coming home so I just live in Argentina right now um but yeah so I'm an auditor by day and f1 fanatic by night and during the day <laughs> um but yeah, so that's a little bit about me. I'm from Texas, kind of, but I've lived literally all over. So when people ask me where I'm from, I'm just kind of like, uh, great question. But I spent most of my life in Texas. My parents live here now. Um, I'm not really that exciting, but I do travel a lot now that I do live in South America. So you can definitely look forward to you know, getting podcasts from me from all over the Americas, let's say. Um, so definitely have some trips planned when I will probably be podcasting in the middle of nowhere in Argentina or South America. So that could be uh, interesting, let's say. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. What do you want to know about me, Catherine? What? what? I mean, I, I know what there is to know. Um, we used to work together. That sounds in so sketchy. <laughs> I know what there's to know. <laughs> I know what there's to know. Um, um, yeah, we used to work together in college sports in Arizona. Oh, yeah. We did. Yeah, we did. No, that's, a, that's a good... Um, yeah, so I do come from a college sports background. Um, I worked... I've worked for multiple universities, and I have a background in, like, my university degree in... Um, not college athletics, but I guess, like, sports finance... So I come from kind of the sports world, I guess you could say. I wasn't in it for very long. I did go into auditing kind of right out of college, but um, definitely spent a good time, good, I think six years maybe, in athletic departments, um, in business offices, and learning about, you know, the business and logistics and operations. So that's kind of, you know, where I get really interested in F1 because the first time like I looked into it I was like 
holy hell, how do they logistically make this work? Like, that's really what sparked my interest. Um, but yeah, that's a little bit about me and my background. So yeah. I'm, like, very not qualified to be a podcast host and talk about F1, but that's kind of why we're here, because that's just what we like to do is talk F1, so. Yeah, exactly. And I am a former yeah. sports PR statistician, person, human. Uh, I grew up in California. I accidentally moved to Alabama for a year. I intentionally moved to Arizona, <laughs> and I've been living in Arizona for about 10 years with my cat. I am a homebody, so while Emily is traveling the Americas and podcasting, I will be podcasting from my living room with my cat. Um, right now, I am currently running a summer camp in California. Um, it is July, and I'm wearing long sleeves because I am covered in spider bites, and no one needs to see that. Um, oh but I have been involved in sports in a sports family for my entire life. My father was a, a sports statistician for UCLA for many years. I've been a sports statistician for um, multiple major uh, athletic departments in the United States, including the University of Arizona, the University of Alabama at Birmingham, and Ar uh, the University uh, Arizona State University. Wow, the, the school that I work with. Oops. <laughs> um, I... Um, yeah, and I, I love all things sports and sports statistics and all any anything numbers related that you see coming out of our podcast and coming out on social media is probably coming from me, whereas everything that's, you know, how to make sense of logistics is coming from Emily. Um, and if, if Which I is am... funny because I'm the accountant and, like, that's my, like, thing, but yeah. you are the, the statistics girl, so. Yeah. I mean, my, I, I spend my 90% of my life either watching sports or talking about sports. And when it comes to Formula One, I don't have nearly enough people in my life to talk F1 about. Um, you know, I have you, Emily. I have a couple of my friends. Uh, but that's kind of about it. Um, and, and that's one of the reasons why we are here and we are podcasting. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. speaking of F1, Catherine, how did you get into F1? The people oh. who know. People do want to know. Um, as with all great stories, um, my story about how I got into F1 starts with a guy, um, but the guy's not important. Um, what's more, more important is I watched a couple of races during summer 2021. I had kind of emerged from my, you know, pandemic bubble and came back to, to work at the summer camp that I'm at now. Um, and that, that person introduced me to the sport and I kind of took one look at the head to head battles between Verstappen and Hamilton, took one look at Max Verstappen and said, that guy's an asshole. And I'm into it. That's my driver. Um, so, and and then I, after after summer ended, I went home and watched the rest of uh, Drive to Survive, and got caught up on the rest of the season and watched every minute of the Mercedes Red Bull battle, um, including waking up at four thirty in the morning to watch every minute of coverage of Abu Dhabi 2021, which I know is very triggering to all of Formula One fans, so we're not going to talk about Abu Dhabi 2021, except for when we do. I was going to say, I feel like we have to do a whole just episode on Abu Dhabi 2021. Yeah, I, I think that will, so we will be doing a number of um, F1 101 episodes um, between race weeks and kind of when we want to toss one out, um, and one of those will include, if you're brand new to the sport and or you're just here to listen to me and Emily, um, we will introduce you to the drivers, but we will also introduce you to the background of major events, major people, including Abu Dhabi 2021 and some iconic moments from that race. Yeah. Definitely. Ugh. I just like really can't get over how early you get up to watch races because yeah. I've never been on the West. I've never been on the West coast as an F1 fan. Cause I've been like central and Argentina. Yeah. So I've always gotten a little lucky on the uh, hours there. So yeah. I mean this year I woke up at three 30 to watch, um, Baku, which started at 4 a.m. I didn't watch all the pre-race coverage, but I did wake up for, for the, the beginning and for, you know, the grid walk. We love our grid walks here. Oh, my God. We do. Yeah. What, we love our what about walks. you, Emily? How, how did you get into Formula One? So I got into Formula One. Um, my brother introduced me to it, actually. So I um, went to go visit him in Denver before leaving for Argentina and 
we were, I don't remember exactly, but somehow he was waiting for me to get ready or something and he was watching a show and I was like, that's really loud. Can you turn it down? And he's like, no, <laughs> you can't listen to this at low volume. And I was like, okay. So I came out to watch like five seconds of it just to see what it was. And I was absolutely hooked. I don't remember what it was. I think it was a Gunther interview. And I was like, who is this man? How is he not on every TV in America? He is gold. I love him. Um, and I was hooked. And I think it was right when season four came out, maybe? Perhaps. Or season three. I don't know. One of the seasons just dropped. And so my brother was, like, watching it. And I was obsessed. And so I started, like, he was like, oh, you like it? I'll start from season one. So we were supposed to have this lovely weekend and, you know, hang out right before I was leaving for Argentina. And I wouldn't see him for a while moving to another country, we spent almost the entire weekend inside doing absolutely nothing, just watching Drive to Survive, and I was hooked, obsessed, um, and then I just started watching the entire season, um, the next season from there, because it releases the week before the race, or first race of the, of the year, so we, um, I had time to, like, catch up and, and watch the season, so I'm pretty new to Formula One, but I have obsessive tendencies and so yeah. I dove head first in um because like I was saying too the logistics of it all was super super interesting and I was asking all these questions and um doing a bunch of research just to watch a show which was kind of weird but there's more to it than that because it's the show following the sport um and yeah I don't know I just found it really fascinating and my background in sports is really around like business operations and travel um so lots of logistics so knowing how hard it is to coordinate a f like a football team of 90 guys plus support staff plus your coach's staff I know how much work goes into that and so to consider how many like there's so many moving parts for F1 that really, like, piqued my interest, so I started looking into that, and then I, you know, went down the rabbit hole, and that was a whole thing, but, but yeah, yeah, that's how I got into F1, so. Yeah, and, because, <laughs> like, yeah, and, and sounds I like mean, you. it's because of our, you know, our weird perspective, you know, as people who have worked in sports and know, like, how the sausage gets made, so to speak, we can't look at sports like normal people do just like oh this is fun cars driving very fast someone wins like we we really dive deep into like how how it all works how it runs the the minutia between teams drivers the strategies um and and it's really we can't just we can't just enjoy it we have to know everything we have to live and breathe it which is kind of why we're here Exactly. Like, I did a huge deep dive of looking, I don't know if it was, like, Reddit or what it was, but I did a huge deep dive on the whole, like, paddock breakdown and setup. Oh, yeah. my God. Because, for those of you who don't know, the paddock, it's not like that year round. They have to pop it up and pop it down, and then if it's, like, race back to back to back, they have to then move it to the next race to pop it up again. Like, it's not something that just stays there permanently. It's something that's constantly moving around the world, kind of. They have a few hubs so that they're not sending it constantly. So, like, there's a hub in Europe. There's a hub for the Americas and then for, like, Asia. Um, again, my research. Um, but it's a lot of moving parts, which is just wild. Like, absolutely wild. And that kind of, like, goes into... Haas this year, like, shrunk a bunch of their stuff to try and cut down on costs. <laughs> their, um, their pit wall is, used to be, like, what, seven seats or whatever. It's only, like, three or four this year because it would save them $250,000 a year that they can put towards other things. So, and that all falls into the budget cap and, which, you know, is a whole nother 
Radical yeah, we, we are currently well. recording this as the the budget net cap news, the rumors are coming out in preparation for the actual um, budget cap news. Um, so there, there, there's going to be a lot of back and forth over these next few weeks, over this upcoming summer break. Um, if you're not familiar with the Formula One schedule, um, we are, this podcast will be coming out at the very beginning of the summer break which is this three-week period where everyone goes on vacation, no one is allowed to work, um, but this is where things like contracts will be finalized for drivers, where, you know, if a driver is moving from one car to another or to one team to another, we will get that news coming up. Um, obviously, we were preempted a little bit when um, AlphaTauri made the decision to replace Nick DeVries with Danny Ricardo, um, but other, you know, things like that, those will be happening over this three-week period. Period, give or take, um, before we go into the last stint of races for this season um, between August and the end of November. Maybe. Give or take. Maybe. Yeah. Generally, silly season happens during yes. the summer break. And, and there will be an F1 101 about silly season coming up in a couple of weeks, so we will prepare you before we just throw the recap of silly season at you before uh, the Dutch Grand Prix. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. But yeah, so we, again, cannot sport like normal people. And so nope. we, when we talk about things, we tend to go down these weird rabbit holes on things that no one would think about. Um, but we find them interesting, so... That's yeah. mostly and, what and this is, this, and that's what this is. This is this is for us to be interested about Formula One together, and not just DMing each other on Instagram back and forth, and also letting you, um, our listeners, hear our thoughts. And if you, you know, everything you never thought you wanted to know about Formula One, you will learn here. Um, and 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 probably just, some things not about F one as well. Cause... I mean, we we might accidentally <laughs> mention other things, um, but we we want you know. Formula One has gotten really big in the United States thanks to Drive to Survive, um, which obviously was very valuable as an intro to the sport for us. Um, and we want to keep seeing it grow. Obviously, there are three races in the U.S. Um, and, and, you know, three, four, five, five, six races in North America, South America, you know, the, the easier time zones if you want to get get into the sport. Um, but we want you know, we want more people to be waking up at, you know, four o'clock in the morning to watch race coverage um, and, and talk about our sport with us. And um, we we also just we couldn't find that podcast that's already out there that gave us the perspective that we were looking for. So we're just going to do it ourselves. Yeah, definitely. Like when I was trying to find more about F1, because I'm I'm an intellectual. I like to do a lot of research. And so when I was like trying to learn about F1 and get really into it just from watching Drive to Survive, I also love podcasts. I walk my dog all the time. I listen to podcasts constantly. I'm in the car all the time. I listen to podcasts in the car. So I was like, oh, I'll find an F1 podcast. But there just wasn't one that truly spoke to me, let's say. Like, there's a ton of really good ones out there, but some are super, super technical. Or you have to have a really, really good understanding of F1 to know what is going on at all. And I just didn't have that. So I was looking for something that was, like, fun, banter, you know, just... Can you tell I've been wa watching Love Island? <laughs> Using my, <laughs> my, British, uh, my British slang. Got good chat and banter. Um, but I just couldn't find that. And Catherine and I basically had a podcast going in our DM and it was like, well, why don't we just do that? Because if there's, if we're looking for a podcast, I'm sure other people are too. So, yeah. Yeah, and, and this and will be... And so going off track was born. Exactly, and this this will be that happy medium bet between, like, the tech and strategy side of Formula One and why things happen and why things worked and didn't work during a race, and also the pop culture side of things, because Formula One has probably one of the best social media, like, teams. Like, the, ev every single 
Formula One team has their own social media team and they are probably the best in all of sports and as somebody who works very heavily in social media and marketing I'm kind of obsessed with how good their stuff is um, we we are also in, in the midst of you know the Barbie movie just came out in theaters and so all the teams that were taking advantage of you know the Barbie movie marketing and and all these like the, the aspects of viral marketing so you'll get you know the the nitty-gritty but you're also going to get the pop culture and how you know how Formula One fits into society really or, or like that's that's what we're here to share with you and and what we love about all of these things yeah the social media really sold me on it honestly like mm -hmm. I don't know where they're finding these people to run their social media but it is absolute gold if you guys don't follow the teams highly suggest it it's Absolutely. so good and I would say follow us. professional sports wise, well, yeah, follow us as well. But I would say professional sports wise, it's probably some of the best like social media out there. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I like I said, I, I spend most of my time watching sports and following sports teams on social media. And the content that comes out of these Formula One teams is like none other. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'm obsessed um, with it. Yeah, and if there's something, I think that's Formula mostly what one, our DM is too, is sending it back yeah. and forth. Yeah, ninety percent of our time is is you know sharing memes, which you will find on our Instagram account. Going off track, going dot off dot track. Make sure to follow us. Um, and it's yes. you know, and if there's anything that you want us to see, you know, cover on an F one one hundred one, um, drop us a comment if you're watching this on YouTube, or send us a DM on Instagram, and just let us know what about the sport that you're curious about, because we have a lot of fun topics that we're very excited to cover in the educational portion like Nico Rosberg and his 2016 one and done championship or what the heck happened to force India. Um, and, and so if there's something about formula one that you want to know, please let us know so that we can give you what you want. Yeah. Cause we have no problem talking about things. So whatever you guys want us to talk about, we will cover it. Yeah. We, we will do that research and we um... will get you what you want. Yeah, exactly. Like I said, I have no problem going down a rabbit hole about F1, so. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, Catherine. Yes. I feel like you already brought this up, but just to confirm, who was your F1 team? I mean, I did kind of make that very clear at the beginning, but I am a Red Bull fan and I love Max Verstappen. And even though Emily isn't as much of a fan, I love Checo Perez. Um, and I, I just, you know, there, I just wanted to give you like a platform to not, um, be a Red Bull fan, but it's fine. You can confirm it. But I, just I, I the opportunity. Well, I, I am going to be a Red Bull fan. I am not wearing my Red Bull jacket because it's about a million degrees here on the mountain. Um, but I have it, and I have my hat somewhere in my cabin. Um, but, yeah, you know, I just took one look at that team and said, you know what, they're mine now. Um, and and that's, that's what I did. Um, and that's where I'm going to stay for a while, I think. Uh, what, about, what about you, Emily? I mean, I know this answer, but t tell the world. I'm so disappointed. Um, so, you know, it's it's a hard life these days, but I am a Ferrari fan. Um, I just, is. I really like the history. I know, it's, it's miserable. Um, it's, it's constantly team, we don't know our own strategy, or... Also, did you see in Hungary, um, Carlos was, like, making up his own strategy on the fly? <laughs> He's did, like, I did. Oh, I'm just going to watch Checo. If he, if he pits, like, I'm not going to pit, and I'll stay out. And they're like, sounds good. Stick with that. And it's like, so now our drivers are creating our own strategy. Um, yep. But, yeah, I'm a, I'm a Ferrari girl, so that's a really hard life right now. But, you know, I don't know. I think... I just like to keep things interesting. <laughs> so. Yeah, you know, maybe maybe they'll have but, a good day one day this season. A day that is race day and not just, you know, qualifying or a really good free practice three. Yeah, you know, I, I'm, 
I'm just waiting for like next year, like new regulations. I don't have a lot of hope for us to be honest, but it's fine. Um, but this year, I mean, you know, we just had, um, we have a new, uh, team principal, so I'm, I'm giving us a year of grace. So yes, exactly. And, and we will go into, you know, who the teams are, who their team principals and relevant personnel are in our next episode, which will be F1 101 F1. Um, and that will, that will kind of explain who the heck we are all talking about. Um, and that will be live on a podcast uh, platform of your choice and on the Going Off Track with Catherine and Emily YouTube channel next Monday. You are really good at plugging this, by the way. I, just I, I mean, <laughs> my, my other background when I'm, when I'm not a sports statistician is, you know, social media marketing and, and you know, online business coaching. Um, so I have done a couple podcasts before. I feel like you are super qualified to do this podcast, and I'm just like your 80 year old grandma friend who's along for the ride. <laughs> that is the but dynamic. We're of this going podcast. to have fun anyway. We are, we are. But that's like, so speaking of just like friends talking, we finally like got the full inspiration to do this podcast because of another podcast um f1 with drs so for those of you guys who don't know doc shepherd is a podcaster well for actor former actor i don't know now he podcasts like full-time um something like that who knows his background but he's an armchair or er, has the armchair expert now he has a just an f1 podcast with like three of his really good friends they all live across the world and it sounds just like friends talking and like I said, Catherine and I kind of, kind of like talked about this, but we were like, oh, it's really hard. We don't live in the same place or the same continent. How is this even possible? And we heard them kind of like talking and having, you know, good conversation. And, we're, and we were like, well, maybe we can make this work. And again, we like it, like the podcast, think it's great. But we also have a different perspective being women, being women in sports. So, you know kicking it off with a with another f1 podcast but definitely getting inspiration from that one so yeah that there there were there were a couple really good episodes that we were like oh this 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 has legs and and this is something that that we can also um use to you know if, if they can do it we can also do it type of thing yeah definitely definitely yeah because they all like live all over the place in like three different countries or whatever and um so that was kind of when it was hit me of like, okay, we can figure this out. We can do this. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, it, it, exactly. Definitely. Um, yeah. So that's, that's us. That's uh, why we're here, what we're doing. Um, and if you want to be along with the ride uh, for us, make sure you follow us and make sure you download the podcast and uh, leave a five-star review on the podcast platform of your choice, because that really helps us. Uh, and subscribe get to our YouTube channel. And subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, we're, we're really excited. To, we, we've got some really fun content coming down the line. We're really excited. Um, we're so excited about this podcast that we are recording episodes weeks before we intended to. Because our we were, our first um, episode is um, initially was actually supposed to go out the week of August 21st. So we are starting a month early because we are very impatient people. And we just decided that we just had to start right now. Even though we are you know, in, in the complete last places that we intended to, um, start this podcast, but you know what? We're making it work. Oh, we have literally no time to be doing this right now. Like <laughs> we planned it because we're like, oh, we're really, really busy through the end of July. So let's do this in August. And here we are in the end of yeah. July <laughs> recording because we just can't wait. When this episode comes out, I will be at the top of a mountain with some of our campers from the summer camp that I am helping run. Um, so I will be on a mountain when this episode is released, and um, that's that's exactly. And I will be just flying home. Yes, I'll be on a plane back to Argentina. <laughs> so yes, so so we will both be um, in the exact last place that we expected this to be happening, but we also couldn't imagine you know being in you know any other place to to do this and to just have this happen now yeah exactly i wish we could just start now so yeah at the time we're coming up on spa i'm so excited for spa Spa's i know we're good. like not talking about a preview or anything i'm just gonna say i love spa it's such a classic 
classic one. So yeah, we we will we will obviously go more in, in depth about um, about spa and um, the history behind spa and spa 2021 will also be an episode of F1 101 because uh, yep. that is uh, that was quite the interesting race. Um, but it's you know it's very exciting and we are currently going off track and off of our rundown. Um, but that's what this going off track podcast is: is we are going to have a topic and then we're going to go down the rabbit hole and you're going to come with us and it's going to be great. Yeah. So this has been the going off track podcast. Thanks for going off track with us, guys.